Hi, and welcome back to our channel Summaries of a Bookworm. Your number one place for all who need or like to listen to book summaries. Let's start with the book summary of today. The river between begins with a description of two East African ridges in a valley. The first is Kamino, and the second is Makuyu. The river, valley, slopes, and trees all exist in harmony. For centuries, the ridges have been occupied by sleeping lions. They are now the site of the region's struggle for leadership, life, and death. Murungu, according to legend, rose from Makuyu and claimed the fertile land for the Gikuyu country. He gave the land to a man and a woman named Gikuyu and Mumbi. Chig and Waiyaki descended from these ancestors. People pay homage to a sacred and spiritual superiority that exists here. The valleys and ridges are now behind us as the next scene unfolds. Two boys emerged from the woods. Kamau and Kinuthia are wrestling and fighting with sticks. Kinuthia is disparaging Kamau's father, Kabanyi, a Makuyu native. Kabanyi has converted to Christianity and is regarded as a traitor for joining Syriana, the site of a Christian mission. Kinuthia trips and falls during their struggle. Kinuthia's hands are pinned behind his back as Kamau stands over him. Kinuthia is bleeding and in a bad situation. Waiyaki, Chig's only son, enters the scene to break up the fight. Waiyaki is athletic and well-built, with a scar above his left eye from a run in with a goat. Kamau obeys Waiyaki and withdraws from Kinuthia through his gaze. Chig, Waiyaki's father, is well known in Kameno. Many legends surround him, and some claim he possesses the gift of magic. He barely survived the Great Famine and raised a family of daughters who are now happily married. Chig warns against the Syriana Missionary Center. He and the other elders are working to preserve tribal culture, including passing that responsibility on to his son, Waiyaki. The boys gather their cattle and return them home. As Waiyaki returns home, it is dark, and his father is surprised to learn that he has returned with the cattle from the plains. He is impressed by his son's fortitude. Waiyaki later plays a game based on the Demi's stories. The Demi na Mathathi are legends that date back to the dawn of time. Waiyaki is told he cannot be Demi because he has not yet been circumcised while playing this game with another boy. Waiyaki feels small and insignificant as a result of this. Waiyaki is preparing for his second birth ceremony, which includes learning the ways of the land as well as the magical ritual of being born again. In preparation, the elders drink beer and slaughter a goat. The ceremony is simple, requiring him to sit between his mother's thighs while the tribe reenacts his birth with a thin cord taken from a slaughtered goat. Waikyaki is upset, crying, and falls to the ground as a result of the ceremony. This is not typical, and it raises some concerns among the tribe's members about Waiyaki's character. Waiyaki returns to the village's daily routine by tending to the cattle and hunting. Chig, his father, teaches Waiyaki about the sacred grove and his tribal responsibilities. He tells Waiyaki that he must go to Syriana to learn the white man's ways, but not his vices. Waiyaki travels to Syriana, accompanied by Kamau and Kinathia. The white missionaries, including Reverend Livingstone, are impressed by the boys. Joshua's two daughters, Niambra and Mathoni, are also at the mission. Joshua has betrayed the tribe by converting to Christianity. People who have converted have been circumcised and are now following Christ's teachings, and thus embody both traditions. Mathoni and Niambra are very close, and Mathoni admits to Niambra that she wants to be circumcised despite her Christian faith. Circumcision is an important rite for the Gikuyu. Niambara realizes this will enrage her father and protests to Mathoni that she should not go ahead with her circumcision plans. Mathoni is not found at home one evening. Her mother, Miriamu, and Niambara keep this a secret and continue to look for her. In their quest to find her, Niambara finally tells her father about Mathoni's circumcision plans, and he nearly strangles her. Joshua dispatches Niambara to collect Mathoni from Kameno, where she is staying with her aunt for the circumcision rite. Mathoni refuses to come back. Her rebellion has made headlines all over the hills. The circumcisions of the boy and girl, Waiyaki and Mathoni, are nearly simultaneous at this point. Waiyaki travels to Kameno to speak with Mathoni about her decision and impending circumcision. He becomes attracted to her during the celebration and admires her courage and beauty as she sings and dances as part of the ritual. Waiyaki's circumcision is done in the river in very cold water, according to tribal custom. He is in a lot of pain, but he accepts it as part of his education just like the stories and teasing from those around him during his recovery. Mathoni's circumcision is also finished, and she falls ill. Waiyaki pays Mathoni a visit and informs him that she wishes to see her sister, Niambara. Waiyaki captures her, and Niambara decides they must transport her to the White Hospital. 
they deliver her there with great difficulty. Methoni passes away hours later. When her father, Joshua, learns of her death, he is so shocked and enraged that he remains emotionless. This event is interpreted differently by each leader. Joshua is unafraid to travel to the New Jerusalem. He interprets Methoni's death as a warning to those who oppose Christianity. Chig interprets death as a lesson to the tribe to follow its rituals. The two areas are clearly separated. Makuyu is the home of the Christians, while Kameno is the home of the tribe. Methoni's story becomes legend, and major schisms occur. Chig is dying of a stomach disease, and Waiyaki refuses to return to Syriana, instead staying with his father. Kabanyi secedes and returns to the tribe. Waiyaki inherits a great deal of responsibility following Chig's death, and he establishes the Mariashoni school, which teaches children tribal teachings. Kamau and Kinuthia are his colleagues. At the moment, a government post is being built, making the tribe feel even more vulnerable. Waiyaki achieves great success as a teacher and earns widespread esteem. Additional schools are built, and he frequently meets with the elders, including Kabanyi, who has grown envious of Waiyaki's success. Waikyaki and Kabanyi's relationship is strained. Christian missionaries also start constructing schools. Waiyaki is consumed by conflict and division. He wishes to be free and escape from it all, but the tribe relies on him. To get away for a moment, he goes to the river and meets Niambura there. She is lonely without her sister, Methoni, and seeks solace near the water. Waiyaki and Niambura are attracted to each other, but their meeting is seen as a threat to the tribe as well as the Christian mission. They try to meet again, but Niambura is under pressure from her father not to. Waiyaki visits her church just to see her, which causes quite a stir among the elders, particularly Kabanyi. He expresses his love for her and asks her to marry him at the river. Kamau is falling in love with Niambura at the same time that Waiyaki is. Kamau tells the elders about their meetings, which causes problems for Waiyaki. Waiyaki begins to resent the fact that his actions are being watched and realizes why Niambura will no longer meet with him. Waiyaki pauses during his attempts to see her at the church to observe Joshua's intensity during a sermon. Waiyaki is impressed by Joshua's preaching and vocal power. Joshua's devotion to Christianity is something Waiyaki admires. By giving a speech at a public school event, Kabanyi begins to challenge Waiyaki. The crowd applauds Waiyaki's speech, humiliating Kabanyi. As the tension rises, one of Joshua's huts is set on fire. Niambara's fears grow, and she develops a strong desire for Waiyaki. Waiyaki is her only savior from her domineering father. Christmas and the day of circumcision are approaching, and both sides are preparing. Waiyaki is summoned to the elders for a meeting, and they confront him about his plans with Niambara and his church visits. They question his dedication to the tribe. Based on his interactions with Methoni and Niambara, Kabanyi accuses Waiyaki of being unclean. Waiyaki is enraged. Waiyaki, according to Kamua, is the greatest threat to the tribe. A large crowd has gathered on the hills at the meeting place. The people want something done. Waiyaki talks about bringing the people together. When he appears, they applaud. He talks about education, unity, and political liberty. He decides to fight for his love for Niambara as well. Kabanyi stands up for the tribe and ancient rituals. He speaks as someone who used to be a Christian. He discusses the inner workings of evil and good in the hearts of men and in the country. He claims Waiyaki is unclean and collaborates with the white man. Kabanyi discusses their tribe's history and heroes. In the end, Waiyaki is asked whether he loves Niambara or the tribe. Waiyaki and Niambara are handed over to the Kiyama, who will judge them and decide what to do with them. The people abandon them in the face of the elders' judge. Thank you for listening to our book summary. I hope we sparked your interest in the book. Please let us know in the comments below and give this video a thumbs up. Do you want to listen to more book summaries? Subscribe to us and you will get a notification every time we publish a new summary. Bye bye and see you next time.